Sir, we have not talked to you about Jonathan Major, Sol Slevin. The verdict has come out. Two not guilties, but that doesn't matter because there are two guilties. And mm. uh, how you feel about this, Levin? Uh, in my personal opinion, I think it was kind of a setup. They were just looking for just one guilty and just enough reasons just to get him out of there. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think people are, I, I think it makes a lot of headline news when you hear negativity. So if he gets at least one guilty, regardless of what kind of charge it was, even though it was a misdemeanor, everybody's going to be like, oh, he's just guilty in general. Yeah, like the way it's been reported was wild. Like if you just looked at the headlines, you'd think he put her in a chokehold and body slammed her into the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, they they were so just abstract with that law. The the way they put that that that, that charge in, it's so abstract. It's so g- general. So if anything happens, like if you touch another person, technically, you could be they could charge you with this 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 one thing and it's, harassment. It's, yeah, no, if you look at so you look at somebody wrong. I mean, we we have harassment classes at Ford, and if you look at somebody up and down, you're done. You're <laughs> like <laughs> legitimately, you know. So that's how abstract and not silly this whole entire thing is. And it's funny, Charlemagne the God came out and said exactly the same thing that all of us have said. Look how the mainstream media covered it. Look how they put it out there. And then no matter what happens, they make this man look guilty. Rather, it's the most minute thing you've ever seen before or the biggest. It didn't matter. It was a headline. Well, well, it's because how this started. The day he was arrested, it was strangulation and other more extreme charges. And there was like way more of them. He only went to court for four things and beat two of them. And the ones he lost to were a violation and a misdemeanor. But because of how we began, and then the months later, you know, there's still a restraining order against him. And then a month later, there was a, you know, the Rolling Stone just talked to 40 anonymous uh, (laughs) alleged abuse victims. And you know that there's going to be some cooperation with the D. So when you combine all that, you know this, you know that, you know, and then he gets a guilty, even though it was for reckless assault in his defending himself he went too far and the jury thought that that's where the finger injury on her came from because that's what they that's how they perceived it and i mean i got my problems that that. not where it came from didn't it come from somewhere else how about he came from her attacking him how about that that's where (laughs) all the scratches on him you know listen (laughs) beyond a reasonable doubt the jury decided and they had enough evidence to know that that black i mean Jonathan yeah, exactly. Mays, that man <laughs> definitely <laughs> caused that uh, injury on her finger, man. That was it. By running away? Was he kicking rocks at her finger as he was running away? <laughs> no, he was being aggressively Negro when he... Uh, tried to <laughs> right. <laughs> so, being an aggressive like his, Negro like his, heel was just like, his heel was just like back flicking like pebbles and somehow it managed to touch her. I don't know. Like it, See, it what was... happened is that she had emotional damage. So she went to the club to get rid of the emotional damage. She had a little mm-hmm. much alcohol intake. Sometimes it can happen. You slide down the wall because you're intoxicated because you're trying to, you know, your pain is inside of your chest and That's you can't get it out. Is. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Hey, oh, is that how you spell reckless? Because I've been spelling it with an R, not a W. No, no, no. It's not a W. It's an R. Well, I don't know. American English, we speak British English here in South Africa. We had powdered wig colonizers. Oh, so. uh, yeah, I do speak the Queen's English in South Africa. Which yeah, part are you we at? We say doth protest and all of that stuff. <laughs> well, <I'm just> <laughs> <was ready. laughs> I'm trying to find you. Where are you at? Oh, me. You really uh, brought up Google's map. Don't, don't answer that. Yeah. Don't answer that. You don't want nobody doxing you or coming after you. <laughs> right. You don't well, even know where this man works at. This man could be <laughs> this man could be flying a plane right over I, right I over here Ni- right now. I could be a Nigerian scammer. You don't know. <laughs> uh, Nigerian prince. A prince, yes. <laughs> From Abuja. <laughs> getting punished for push. Oh, let's bring it back to Jonathan. Oh, yeah. getting punished for pushing someone away from you. Is absolutely crazy. Basically, Eric, he got a flag on the play. That's basically what happened. He pushed off. He got caught on camera. And then they had to throw the flag. Because if you don't throw the flag there, then towards the end of the game, we have to go back and look at that play. (laughs) And why did that happen? Why didn't the refs catch that? Exactly. They only (laughs) show you that scene. They don't show you all the stuff that's going on before. The fact that he's getting out of the car. She's coming out on his side. They don't show any of those other things. They only want to show show that he's... Oh, they I'm didn't show her, her chasing him down like a Terminator. 
Like at one point, she's literally like <laughs> running down the street like the T one thousand. But she's running. Tell me, she's not running like Woody from Toy Story on Toy Story Run when they were chasing the when they're chasing the moving van. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, just say, I saw the video and I was like, I don't know what the charges are. Part of the problem is that the video is um it stops and you're gonna see like a skip ahead, right? I think it's because it's a motion detected camera. All you see is right there. Yes, but yeah. it starts right here with the and uh this was everything. I wanna know what happened in between this car stopping, which is you see how it says Saturday at 12 41 and 48 seconds, 49, 50. Now it's going to skip ahead to from 51 <laughs> seconds to 12 seconds. So how many times is that? Is that uh, uh, 20 some seconds? They're right there. They just, just about, them. about oh, 20 in, seconds. In 20 seconds, he did everything that everybody said that he did. <laughs> <laughs> what? Exactly. See, what he is, we, we don't know. He's hit from Dragon Ball Super. He had to time skip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> bop, 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 real quick. And then go around the other side of the car. We just didn't see no, it. No, everybody said that Ezra Miller's reverse flash. No, apparently Jonathan Majors is reverse flash. <laughs> nah, he's a black racer. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, there's just Jonathan Majors moving through time. Like, he is Kang. He's Kang for real. He's a time master. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I don't man. know if you guys are catching what if, but have you noticed what if came out? I mean, was 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 done way before the giant the major stuff. No mention of Kane throughout the whole entire multiverse. So it's automatically telling me that he wasn't a part of the plans in the in the whole entire beginning. Mm. No. And I'm a, and that's look, what I, look, look at that. Look at that. Look at well, that. Well, there's the flag that's right the there. The girl. flag. Yo, flag. I just I, okay. Let me pause it. You're gonna see him pushing her, which maybe it may seem like an aggressive thing, someone being pushed. And I understand that. But with context of the driver saying that she was the aggressor, her herself saying she took the phone, she was hitting him, and then what we'll see afterwards where she's still pursuing him, it is safe to assume he was under attack. And oh, yeah. pushing someone who was a says what? No, I was agreeing with you. Oh, sorry. I don't have my headphones on right now because because oh. I don't have them, but I should. But like the, the way he's pushing her. It's clear that from her popping back up too, that she is invading his personal space. I'll play it now. Like watch every. I'll play it in slow motion. Now I don't know if you guys remember that special by Chris Rock where he's like, "I shake the shit out of a woman." Apparently, <laughs> that's just he's oh, yeah. going to jail now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's it. <laughs> He said, I won't hit her, but I sure will shake the shit out of her. <laughs> I'll shake this weed you out your head now. jail. <laughs> it's just crazy to me that, that, that she's so afraid of him that she's chasing him. Like, if you're afraid of me, then why are you chasing me down the street? Because why people, it, white, white people always go towards things that they're afraid of, apparently. <laughs> 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 Sharks, watched, tigers, sharks, tigers, it. tornadoes. It's it's fine. Look, yeah, she watched enough me. Freddy Krueger movies to know how to stalk this man properly. <laughs> so she was like, "There's no way you're gonna get away. I'm gonna haunt your dreams." Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do in that situation? I see him pushing her away. The one time he doesn't push her is when she's coming out of the out car, and, pursuing he him. He helps her out. He helps her out. Like he, he got her, grab her arm, and make sure she doesn't fall. Did he really? That? Yeah. Like she's about to fall out and he grabs her arm and he's like, okay, just making sure you're good. So he walks he didn't to the trying to get her in the car. Jonathan was too nice, bro. He should have just let her fall to the to the asphalt by herself. And <laughs> then, then that would have been off. more charges. Then you have scratches on the face and that was your fault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I'm just hands up the entire time. Just up here. <laughs> but 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 it for real, it's like nothing. He, I mean, he couldn't do anything nah, man, more nothing. and it wouldn't have mattered. It it wouldn't have matter, and I'm getting ready to. I mean, not tomorrow on uh, Tuesday's morning live. I'm talking. To, I'm going to talk about the young lady who was killed when she called nine one one in L. A. and was killed by the police for her abuser, and how this situation. I always said it. What if that would have happened to Jonathan? And it fortunately it happened to this young lady. So why does this keep happening? Why don't we have anybody to call? 
when we're getting attacked or get the benefit of the doubt. So the, for all the people who's going to, you know, watch, you know, uh, 2,000 people who's going to watch Giant the Majors or more, that's going to be your Giant the Majors, you know, story for the week because that that's heartbreaking to know that you can't do anything now. You can't call the police for your attacker without being either murdered or sent to jail. So what can you do? Do, do we call? Do, what do we do now? Mm. So what Jonathan Major actually said was correct. Whatever, no matter if they w if you go to the hospital, they're gonna think something. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those text messages that look bad because he says don't go to the hospital. Remember, guys, it's not about what that wasn't a text about March. That was a text from September. Yeah. But his estimations that on his paranoia was confirmed that if it, <laughs> if, if he and a black her, man, you should know that's not paranoia. It's facts. It's Look not his, 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 his spider senses at this point. <laughs> I mean, you just know as, as a black man, you can't be put in any situation. And he had receipts. Most of us, if we were in that situation, wouldn't have the receipts, wouldn't have all the proof that we we tried to make sure we were taking hands off, that we went entered uh the, the apartment with someone else. We wouldn't have those things. You know, mm. yet he has all those things and still guilty nah, I, I, the I, they, they did him they did him dirty especially in the court of law i don't know marvel i think jonathan's gonna be okay though i think this if eventually he's like his, his career is not shot it's not done by a long shot there's there's no, no way there's no. no way but it's it just it does suck the way they handled all of it and you look at it and you're just like, this is why when we get into the recast of Chala conversations and people keep going like, it's the cast, it's the crew. They were trying to honor Chad. I'm like, Marvel is not your friend. They've mm -hmm. never been moral. It's never been about morals. Marvel, at one point, they sued a couple that used Spider-Man on their son's grave. They literally sued that they, that family for that. So I don't know where y'all get this idea that Marvel has morals. No, they were looking like they were in Jonathan Major's corner, but until the verdict came out, and I personally think even before the verdict, they had already made their right. decision. Oh, yeah. Remember the Variety, one thing about the Variety article, it did say in April they talked about what was going on, and this was, then obviously they already had what they thought about, not just Jonathan Majors, but that character or Kane already out. But here's exclusive footage of Alvin Bragg's what he says not to do with white women. Here we go. This is exclusive footage from Alvin <laughs> Bragg's. <laughs> Looking at the white girl is a foul. Speaking to the white girl <laughs> is a technical foul. And touching the white girl, oh, 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 oh. now that's a lecture. <laughs> hey, Alvin Bragg's everybody. Yeah, like, they make a movie. The guy who voice acts him, he was in the Soul Soul Plane movie. Mm -hmm. This guy should play Alvin Bragg if Jonathan Majors makes like a, <laughs> a, a biopic. <laughs> you know. Megan Good could play a part of it. It shouldn't be a movie. It should be a series. It should be on Netflix. Oh my God. Speaking of Netflix, Timothy King sent me something. It was a petition on, on Netflix. It's got 35 signatures. He just sent me this uh, right before we started recording this. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Wow. Send me. Let me let me sign let me sign that also. Let me see if I can find that. Because uh, I said that on my got, stream. If, yeah, if you got that uh, chill, I'll sign that also. I just retweeted it uh, on a Sunday at 2 o'clock p.m. The movie magazine Dreams was set to be released on December 2023, but became unavailable to be seen in theaters due to writer's strike and other controversies. This film gained high... By the way, he's right about that. He's not making that up. There were a lot of movies that were changed the date of, and mm -hmm. uh, Magazine Dreams was one of them. Mm. This film gained high praises from critics at Sundance. On the review aggregator website rotten tomatoes they got 84 percent of 92 critics reviews are positive with an average rating of 7 out of 10 the website's consensus reads its dramatic form may get a little wobbly during certain reps but jonathan mage's incredibly committed performance makes magazine dreams well worth a watch metacritic uses a weighted average assigned the film a score of 72 out of 100 you know that's not really that great i mean it's a good yeah, movie <laughs> Based on hey, we, we've seen worse. We've seen worse, especially this year. <laughs> Indicating generally wow. favorable reviews from Wikipedia. Magazine Dreams was also a winner of the Jury Award. There we go. Jury. For Creative oh Vision at the Sundance Festival. An Oscar buzzworthy performance along with a very dark, dramatic tone is reason enough alone for this product of fine cinema to come out of its shadows. Magazine Dreams was written and directed by Elijah Bynum. 
The film stars Jonathan Majors, Haley Bennett, Taylor Page. I don't know these people. Michael Hearn, Harrison Page, and Harriet Sansom Harris. Yeah, the only person I know is Majors. <laughs> <laughs> this position is meant to show, display, and kindly ask the streaming giant Netflix to take interest in the film and to stream it on its platform. It also asked Netflix if they could consider obtaining the film from Searchlight Media. Stars these guys. Da, 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 da. Please sign the petition so the public can see this film on Netflix. And let's get ready for a rich cinematic dark tale. Does Netflix have a history of taking movies like that? Uh, yes. I think so, yeah. Yes. Well, because I because uh, uh, King was on, my, was on my stream a couple days ago. And I was like, the best thing that, that Disney could do is let Netflix have it. The reason why the Netflix have it, for one, Netflix is a bigger platform. Pe more people flock to Netflix than any other streaming platform. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? So, you know, I was like, number two, they take a lot of these type of movies, these film festival movies, anything from Sundance, anything that they're going to market, and they're great at resurrecting careers. Number one example is Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle was out of the limelight for so many years. Netflix was like, well, we'll give you $20 million. And Dave Chappelle doesn't look back. No matter what the controversy, Netflix has had this guy's back. Something that we do not see with Disney. So if they want to do something, the best thing they should do, sell that to Netflix. Let Netflix take it. And I'm telling you, this guy, this guy will be well off, you know, uh, going forward. Mm. And if you wanted to be petty, I'm sure Jonathan Majors could get somebody to write a script about a time dude. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what, what, uh, what's his name? Ryan, Ryan Reynolds already did that. You know what I mean? Where he played his, he had his, he went back in time and he talked to his younger self. Netflix is big enough that they let things happen and let you know all the the stupid stuff die down, and and you're gonna still stream it. And then all of a sudden, all these things that are terrible in box office end up doing great on Netflix because Netflix just knows how to get out the way and let it happen. And people are going to naturally just going to watch because it's a good movie. It's a good movie. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny? Didn't they resurrect um, Robert Downey Jr.'s career after all yeah. that? Yes. Prior to Iron Man? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the reason why Disney took a chance on Robert Downey Jr., which they say is the biggest chance they ever took because of Netflix. Uh, Paramount had uh, that movie, though. I don't know. No, no, not Paramount. Some other studio that wasn't Disney had Iron Man One and Iron um, Man Two. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Was so it was, yeah, you're right. That was before they yeah. became Marvel Studios. Yeah, yeah, what yeah. Was it, it was Paramount. It was yeah. Paramount. But I mean, still, if if you look at the way things get reported now, I mean, they don't do that with white actors or whatever. But the point is, is that if if by happenstance in another alternate universe, Robert Downey Jr. was a black actor somewhere, somebody in some magazine was going to be like, "Oh, he did this. He did this. He did this. He did this," and then. But he's Iron Man, but he did this, but he's Iron Man, but he also did this, but he's Iron Man. That, well, that would I would say Tropic Thunder, he was a black guy, so I mean <laughs> yeah. I remember that. he was Australian, <laughs> he was black, he was Chinese one point in time, he went back to black. You know yeah. what I mean? He went back to Australian by the end of the movie. I know who he was, was anymore. <laughs> you know, people are sensitive nowadays. So let's talk Yay. about not being canceled. Jonathan Majors isn't gonna be picked up by guys like Disney, Warner Bros., you know, the big five. Yeah, Sony Paramount, but Netflix is kind of like this oddball there. But where's that studio? I keep saying this, guys. Where's BET Studios? Where's that one studio? Who, <laughs> we don't care what you guys do in your personal lives. We're not going to look at a guilty verdict and believe, oh, the system has d dubbed the in higher unhirable. They're like, where is that yeah, rich? You well, see, I mean, about BET. BET is not even owned by black people anymore. So Paramount. that's Viacom's going to take them. Viacom, exactly. Yeah, but I'm saying like Chillmonger, this is where like that recast T'Challa conversation comes in because I mean, again, like if somebody like T'Challa is perennial, everybody's going to want a piece of that. And then studios are going to be burst through like somebody like T'Challa or whatever. Like somebody's going to be like, oh, OK, we can fund this because it's a bunch of black creatives talking about Afrofuturism. Oh, wait, Black Panther is big. Oh, wait, Afrofuturism was great. Let's keep doing that. Like. That's what I'm saying right now is when we talk about T'Challa and everything, it also leads into like people like Jonathan Majors getting affected by the way Hollywood is set up right now. Like if something as T'Challa was as big as he was, the after effects of all of that thing, it can take care of a whole lot of people that are not even tied to Marvel in the slightest. I'm starting to feel like it's it's a conspiracy overall 
that <clears throat> you don't want the greatest black character like a, someone you know as a black man being a king being a leader being a superhero being all those things all in one you don't want to promote black men that's honestly how I, I, i'm at the point right now that i feel that way that they literally uh, but, don't but, but want to T'Challa promote Jr., but T'Challa Jr. <laughs> doesn't have the same oh, yeah. legacy behind F, it. F T'Challa Jr., the little TJ yeah. kid, is like not on people's radar. They're still on Shuri, and they're like celebrating they, that. Are they? Because women's it, empowerment, a lot of people mm-hmm. are going, that's how, this is what, that, well, you guys are against that, huh? You don't like women? Hmm? They don't even yeah, realize like, Disney is against Shuri, because where was Shuri throughout What If? There was no mention of Shuri. You had, you even had T'Chaka, the the uh, the guy who voiced. I mean, his father, uh, his his father was oh, the Atando older Kani. one. Yeah, Atando you know Kani. what I mean. Yeah. He was in What If, but Shuri, who's a new Black Panther, wasn't mentioned. Was a was a sniffed. Wasn't nothing. Maybe now it's time to wake up and see that it's about a mantle. And that's what this studio is trying to teach you. This mm. this is the one franchise where it's replaceable. You know, sort of like how Green Lantern can have many guys wear the rings. A lot of people can be Black Panther. That's what they're trying to do. Rather than amplifying. The, actually, I have a video about that. Hold on. Stay here. It's about Shuri and how this tricked people. I mean, the Flash is cool. I got nothing against Captain America. But man, wouldn't it be transformative if there was a character with dark skin in a meaningful role? In a top position, cause like representation's cool, but only when it really hits, and he's like a, a genre defining character. Much like <laughs> this guy is part of our keep the change, you filthy animal. Part of our pop culture zeitgeist and the Grinch and Rudolph. That's what I'm trying to get for, of of a, of a top tier character in the superhero genre. And when Black Panther's elevating. And when he's elevating and elevating, elevating, and then you say, you know what? We're going to kill him. Nick's him. No. No more him. But you guys can enjoy this. It's like when you see a kid playing on an iPad. Imagine, guys, you see your little five-year-old on the iPad. How do I get the iPad away from him? Okay, here's the hula hoop. I'll play with the hula hoop and make them be interested in that. And then they'll, oh, let me give it a try. Yeah, sure, here. Take that iPad, and now you can do your taxes or whatever else you were going to do on it, right? That's what you guys got. You guys got the, here comes the airplane. That's what you guys got. There was a character in a top 10 position. Genre defining. Thoughts on that, Buckmeister? Ah, oh, man, where do I start? Where do I start? Okay, first off, I was la- I was dead when you were like, you got the... Mm. <laughs> here comes the airplane. <laughs> Choo-choo. <laughs> you, 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 wouldn't, you wouldn't accept uh, the most popular black character missing, but no, 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 we're replacing with this other thing here, guys. And you got tricked into to digesting it. And now what did that cost you? A top character who was on the level of Thor and on the level of Wonder Woman and, and somebody there. Like if you ask people on the street, name, name a couple characters, you might you might get the Black Panther maybe by the 10th name or something. But no, let's elevate another character. Not just yeah. a top character. He's the top character. He, he mm-hmm. is black superhero. Like he is it. Like when you start, the list begins with him mm-hmm. and no, like that, the way that people been talk forever. about Superman, the way exactly. people talk about Superman, every every superhero, right, is supposed to be some sort of riff or some sort of architect or whatever. Superman is supposed to be their mold or their blueprint. T'Challa is that for black superheroes. Anything I make with a black superhero, it's going to be traced back to T'Challa. Anything anyone else makes with a black super Luke Cage, even Sam Wolf, all of them they get traced back to where to T'Challa. So Adam, it doesn't Adam, make Adam, sense. Adam Adam <laughs> is is exactly that same mode, the same thought that you have to be you have to have this prestige behind you. You have to be honorable. You have to be all these great things, and then you're a superhero. That's what it is. That's you. You're all after, it's all after the Black Panther. It's all after T'Challa and. For people not to understand that it's just it's ridiculous to me. And I'm like, you guys say we're against Shuri. I don't know how. Like, if we're looking at the source material, I don't know how you can say we're against Shuri. No, what is source guys, material? What is that? I don't know what source this this you, word you speak. <laughs> don't understand it. Source material. I don't get that word. Please explain what that means. <laughs> it's it's an old African proverb. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm over. I'm over here in the West. I don't get. I don't get African anything. You know what I mean? 
Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the moth and the butterfly both have wings, but only one. Whenever <laughs> <laughs> oh, you bring up uh, that, it's always a good word. <laughs> Like, I'm just saying, it does not make sense to me when people say you're against Shuri because you want T'Challa. That doesn't make sense. First off, the MCU has never done that. It's never operated in that way. We had Yelena Belova and Natasha Romanoff. We had Kate Bishop and we had Clint Barton. We had um, uh, Jane. Jane Foster and Thor. They they were there always together. together. And one amplifies the other. Yeah. They, you know, it enhances each one. You don't have them replace them. They're supposed to amplify. They're supposed to make it better, bigger. They had like five Ant-Man shrinking people on different <laughs> various portions. And they I were all sharing my time. light. <laughs> I literally hit my light because you said that, too. I'm just like, bro. <laughs> Shuri's actress, Letitia Wright was an anti-vaxxer, so Disney might not mess with her like that. Yeah, and in comes TJ. So to everyone celebrating the Shuri, women empowerment! Nah, you dumbass. This is black depowerment. This is uh, mantle swapping, and this is um, interchanging, and they're all the same. Just slap Black Panther. You don't like the character. You don't like the hero. You just like well, the brand, and you, you like doing this and saying Wakanda. Marble. Look how What's we started with Jonathan... We got over to recasting T'Challa, and now we're casting X Men. Though the way that we just—you started it, Buckmeister. You kept on bringing T'Challa in, and I had to play my little video. It's T'Challa time. I thought yeah, it was yeah. T'Challa time. For, for those of you who don't know what's going on, this is going to be clipped, and it'll be its own little video. But we are meeting on a Sunday every month. It's T'Challa time, where we talk about the comic review, which we will be getting to now. Look out for that video. Uh, everyone, thumbs up this one. Go find the Dre Max show. Go find Buckmeister Cool. Get it. What's your YouTube co called? It's called what media? What? Uh, Meister Geek Media. I have Meister two channels. It's Buckmeister Cool Reacts and Meister Geek Media. If you find one, you'll find the other. I'll, I'll put it in the description. Kaiser Cool Slevin is also here with his YouTube channel. And then Brian's channel is called Spoiler Kings.